How many of you took boosters during COVID? What do they call the thing? Well, it was first called vaccine, then it became boosters. Uh -huh. uh, I took the first vaccine in the US, and then I took two boosters in the UK. And then uh, reports started coming in that the boosters really do mean nothing. And others said it meant a lot. And you don't know, but thank God we are alive. <laughs> Several years ago, I preached this series titled Faith Boosters. I think many of us need faith boosters today because of the season you are in. When you greet me on phone, I know what's going on in your mind. Pastor, I'm at a party election. Pastor, I'm at Shikba, I'm at Shawo. Okay. The moment you find yourself in the midst of overwhelming challenges, that do not seem to line up with your expectations, your faith begins to decline. And when that happens, you can't think right. But the children of Israel, tormented for 40 days and 40 nights by Goliath, all they could feel was fear. Their king ran into a hole. They themselves could not fight. Until a young man came to the battlefield. It's all perspective. But the moment you don't think right, you can't talk right. And when you don't think right and don't talk right, you cannot live right. At that moment, don't pretend. Go to God. Lord, I need help. Can I hear? Amen? Yeah. In order for you to think right, to talk right, and to live right, you need to fine-tune your faith and your hope in God. Where are the guitarists? Okay. I thought there are two. The second one has gone on vacation. Okay, please come. Bring your guitars here. You can disconnect them. Or if they're long enough, you can, you can come close. I just want to ask you a few questions. This guitar, do you at all fine tune them or you just play them? You fine tune the guitar. Why do you fine tune the guitar? You want to get the exact tone and the note. That's why you fine tune it. How many of you know that your faith tone is low? You are so discouraged. I spoke with one of my sons yesterday. He said, I will not tell you a lie, sir. Um, I'm, I'm sad. I said, thank you for telling the truth. What do you want me to do? He said, a year at all. I'm not human, I am. What I do constantly is to fine tune my faith in God. My friend called from Abuja yesterday and said, I know you'll be okay, but I'm not sure of Mrs. B. How is she now? I said, hold on, she's in the living room, she can talk to you. By the grace of God, I'm not bombarded by what bombard others. And by special grace, I'm not overwhelmed by what overwhelmed people. And I'm going to share with you why. That you are overwhelmed is because you have created God in your image and after your likeness. Please take a seat. I'm not sure you are getting me. 
you have seen the limitation of everything around you and you have decided to put that same limitation on God. This is beyond election. It's a daily lifestyle. The moment you find contrary wind and your expectations are not immediately met, you forget past masses. You forget deliverances and things that God had done and you focus on the present thing and recreate God in your image, in your likeness. You make him look powerless like you. It's not new. Israel did that in the wilderness. Judah did that when Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus did the same. Psalm 78 Verse 1 to 8. Give here, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children telling to the generation to come what? The praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Has God done any wonderful works in your life? For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, the children who will be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope where? Even, even your response. That they may set their hope in God. That they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. I may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart right and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The moment your heart is not set right, anything goes wrong, that's the end. It beclouds your reasoning. You forget God's first message. See what they did in this situation. Verse 40, 40 to 44. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Where did they get that limitation from? Themselves. They did not remember his power. The day when he redeemed them from the enemy. When he walked his signs in Egypt, and his wonders in the field of Zoan turned their rivers into blood and their streams that they could not drink. They just suddenly have forgotten everything that happened before. And so, well, this one, we, we thought that this thing can happen at this time, and it can happen at that time, and we didn't think, and if it had been somebody else, we would even manage. Verse 56 and 57. Yet they tested and provoked the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies, but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bull. What exactly has happened that will make you feel like this in church on a Sunday morning? You woke up this morning. You are in this sanctuary. Others are in the mortuary. You could lift up your hand. You could talk. You could sing. You eat. You could digest. You could work. And all of a sudden, every other thing does not matter anymore. Nehemiah chapter 4. So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to have its height. 
The job is not yet completed. It's done up to what? Have it right. For the people had a mind to work. You decent people, you are singing Hosanna. You are getting your dancing shoes ready. You are ready for this. I'm ready for that. All of a sudden, I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> now it happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Astrodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made a prayer to our God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Listen to Judah. This should be the praise that should be going. The tribe that should be offering praise to God. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing. And there's so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Did they build the wall? Did they finish the wall? Look at what Judah said. He said, it's too much. We are not able to build it. That's what you have settled for. I can't, I mean, if I will have to go to the New Testament, I will show you the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Jesus was walking with them. He restrained their eyes. And they said, why are you like this? Why are you talking this way? Are you a stranger here? Are you really a stranger in, in Jerusalem? Don't you know what happened here? The one we had hoped. When hope is lost, faith dwindles, and what happens is you put limitations on God. Minus me. Minus me. I can't hear you. Minus me. If any man will be discouraged in life, Joseph should have been discouraged completely. Joseph should have turned his back on God. To say, I don't understand this. This is not the vision you showed me. You didn't show me the pit. You didn't show me that they would take my coat of many colors. You didn't show me I would go through slavery. You didn't show me I'll be a slave in the house of Potiphar. God, now that I'm even managing here, they have lied against me. They have sent me into jail again. God, I am sure if you, all that you have told me is not true. If anyone should be discouraged, David should have been. He didn't ask for anointing. He didn't tell God, I'd like to be the next king of Israel. He was just in minding his business when they went to call him and say, someone said nobody will sit down till you come. And then after he was anointed, was one crisis after another crisis, one challenge after another challenge, he should have thrown everything away and said, no, this cannot be real. Who are you dealing with, the Almighty or some liar? Psalm 37. Verse 1 to 15. It will show you where the righteous will end and where the wicked will end. We are in the same race, but our destination is not the same place. Do not fret because of evildoers. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Meanwhile, before they are cut down, you are cutting yourself down. And wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall do what? You are not talking. How does he give you the desires of your heart when you delight yourself in him? Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall... You think he can bring it to pass? He shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Are you resting? I can't hear you. Have you entered into rest? You need to see how I'm sleeping. You'll be thank God, thanking God to give you, your, you sleep also. I sleep well. I eat well. I exercise. Because when the journey starts, there will be no time to have room for all those things. This is the time to be built up inside and be strong inside in order to face the things that will happen hereafter. Rest in the Lord and wait how? Patiently for him, 
Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm to who? To the person fretting. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. It's difficult for you under the present circumstances. No. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place. He shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the jurors and gnashes at him with his teeth. What's going to happen? The Lord laughs at him. Are you laughing? For he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who have upright conduct. But what's going to happen? Their sword shall enter their own heart and their bowels shall be broken. Give me Proverbs 10, and then we can pray. Proverbs 10, verse 23. Proverbs 10, 23. To do evil is like sport to a fool, but a man of understanding has wisdom. Verse 24. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. Verse 28 and 29. The hope of the righteous will be, will be glad, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Next verse. The way of the Lord is strength for who? For the upright, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. Are you experiencing his strength this morning? Stand to your feet and say, Lord, I do not look at the wind, I do not look at the storm. I do not look at any circumstances. I focus on God. I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I thank you for strength in my inner man. I thank you for grace for the race, strength for the journey. Every inch of the way, you will be by my side. You will never forsake me. You are there. You are faithful. You are true. You've been faithful throughout all ages. You've never said anything that will return to you void. And therefore, we lift you up this morning, magnify your whole name. We fine-tune our faith in God and fine-tune our hope in you. We give you glory, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Sit down, I've not finished. When your faith is fine-tuned, I will sense it in my spirit and then we can worship God. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Whenever God makes a promise to you, it's as good as done. You didn't hear me. May I repeat myself? Whenever God makes a promise to you, it's as good as done. His words are, yea and amen. Tell your friend God's promise is a done deal. Don't have to think about how will he do it where can it happen? God's promise is what? It's a done deal. So let's learn. For these few minutes, let's fine tune our faith. Let's fine tune our hope in God as we learn from Father Abraham, who at 100 years old was expecting to have a child. His wife's womb was completely barren and dead. Father Abraham's body completely gone. But it took some steps that changed the situation. His humanity showed when his wife suggested to him to go to Hagar. He saw that it was not God's plan. It backfired on them and the entire humanity today. But the time came when he said, I will release myself completely into the hands of God and let him do only what he can do. Romans chapter 4, I'll read from verse 13 to 25. Romans 4, 13 to 25. For the promise, somebody say promise. promise. I can't hear you. Promise. That was all that was, it was. For the promise that he will be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who have the law are hearers, 
Faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Somebody say grace. grace. So that the promise might be sure to how many? To all the seed. I expect you to operate at my level. I expect you to see things the way I see them. I've been around you for such a long time. My life has been on display before you. I am not living this way now because I'm preaching. And then when I get home, I'm, I'm broken down. Uh, my, my children, uh, they, they say food. I say, I can't eat. Uh, what is going on? No! Therefore, it's of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have what? At that time, did he have any child? I have made you a father of many nations. And that promise that you receive, you receive in the presence of him whom he believed. God, who gives life to the dead, everything that is dead in your life, dead hope, dead dreams, dead visions, everything that is dead, the resurrection power of Jesus is going to flow towards them and raise those dead hopes alive again. Who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist. I'm not sure you understand this. He calls those who, things who do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope. This is Abraham now. Uh, my daughter this morning had corrected her. She had taken it and said, oh, uh, what is God's love language? You said that. And he says, it's obedience. So I called her and said, no, uh, my dear, uh, it's not obedience. Because your language, your love language is how you express yourself. It's not how you respond to God. It's how he expresses himself. His love language is giving. And you read the portion. For God so loved the world that he gave us. He read it herself, but could not connect it. That is his love language. So in the same manner, when he stood in the presence of Abraham and called those things that be not as though they were, and began to give life because the word it speaks, their spirit and their life, it begins to give life to dead womb, to dead body. Abraham stood there, contrary to hope. In hope he believed, so that he became, before any child was born, at that time that he positioned himself accurately in what God had declared, he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being, in weak, being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver. Great JV says, did not stagger. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced. Kate Davis said, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore he was accounted to him for righteousness. Don't stop there. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Let me take you th through three steps there so that you can begin to think right talk right, and live right, 
until you see every dead vision, dead dreams, as you see them begin to resurrect and live right before you, and what the word had said cannot happen, then happens that yes, our God is responsible for this and not any man. Let's unpack this faith-boosting composition. Number one, Abraham believed that God gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as do they did. Did we just read that? Do you believe the same? Do you believe God can give life to dead dreams and visions in your life? Number two, when everything around him was contrary to hope, Abraham believed there is still hope. And because hope does not disappoint, he became the father of many nations according to the word God spoke to him. Do you believe that God's word will not return to him void? Has he finished? Did he say it's over? Are you still holding on to God's word spoken to us? Then why are you overwhelmed? Number three, his hope in God fired up his faith in God so that the seemingly impossible things began to happen one after the other. Looked impossible. At least three things happened one after the other so quickly because he lined up with God, he believed God, his hope was rekindled, his faith was fired, he stood there. Let's take them one by one. Number one, he no longer was weak in faith. It was weakness in his faith. After God had said to him in Genesis chapter 15, look at the stars. It was his weakness, the weakness of his faith that made him go to Hagar. But after God spoke to him and said, walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me and live as you should. His faith was fired up. It was no longer weak in faith. Therefore, he did not consider. Somebody, somebody say he did not consider. Don't let your, your intellect rob you. He did not consider the deadness of his body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. I want you to stand. Everything that looks like obstacle, don't consider them. Stop considering them. I will not consider them. I would rather consider God. I will not consider those things that look like stumbling blocks. I stop considering them from this moment. I drop all such considerations. He did not consider the deadness of his body being 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb from the day she was married up to that point. He did not consider, he did not consider the deadness of the womb of Sarah. All right? You are not praying, no? You are just hearing. I say you must stop considering those things. Take them one by one. Put X before them. A demolition squad is taking them out of your life. Everything that looks impossible in your life. With God, all things are possible. As long as he made the promise to you, he will bring it to pass his own way. In Jesus' mighty name. Why did Abraham stop considering the deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb? Why did he consider? Did he stop considering them? Only one thing, because he believes that God gives life to the dead. That's all. That he's able to give life to my dead body. He's able to give life to the deadness of Sarah's womb. He believed that God called those things that be not as though they are. End of story. Therefore, the body that was dead began to come alive again. And not only that, a woman that has gone beyond a menstrual cycle suddenly realized that, uh, what did I call it? Menopause is not men who stop. It's a pause. God can rekindle it. And if you are in that situation, may God rekindle yours today in the mighty name of Jesus. And give life to your womb and give life to your husband's body in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, why did they believe that about God? They know he gives life to the dead. They know he calls those things that be not as though they are. So they began to line up. Why did they pull through? Because they judge God to be faithful. 
That's the problem you're having. They both judge God to be faithful. The moment you do not consider that God is faithful, you go back into unbelief and into doubt and into fear. Don't forget this. Every time, just remember I was born on the 11th of November. And so is Shoban Day, 11-11. Every time you remember that 11-11 people are those who judge God faithful. Hebrews 11-11. <laughs> By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Do you judge God faithful this morning? Do you judge God faithful? Is God faithless or is he faithful? And see the result of their Accurate judgment of God. Verse number 12. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky and multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Do you believe this? Yeah. Everything you call impossible today will become impossible. Yeah. God will make it possible in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, every assignment of the enemy to get rid of you is hereby nullified. You will reach your goal. You will fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. They judge God faithful. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, from this day forward, I judge you faithful, my Father. You are a faithful God. You've been faithful, Lord. In the ages past, we call your name forever and ever, O oh Lord. Everlasting King. Thank you, Father. And now listen. Whenever you fret because there is a delay, it is because you judge God unfaithful. Are you listening to me? Whenever you begin to fret and you are worried and you panic because there seems to be delay, it's not happening exactly the time or the day you had thought it would happen. You are calling God unfaithful. Repent of it right now. Repent of it right now. In the name of Jesus. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. He will never abandon his own. He's a faithful God. Number two. The Bible says, Abraham did not waver or stagger the promise of God through unbelief. Rather, his faith was strengthened how was his faith strengthened? He continually gave glory to God. Are you giving glory to God over what is happening in Nigeria? Are you dancing? Are you rejoicing? Ask my wife. She will, she will almost think something is happening. When I start dancing my own dance, you understand me? Right there, I will sing the song. I will dance my own. Because I've seen the end. Do you understand me? He's faithful. I judge him faithful. If you are not going to give glory to God in your present circumstances, even when you get it, you will still not give glory to him. You will think it's your fasting. You will think it's your prayer. You will not give glory to God. Somebody glorify God this morning. Bless his holy name. Thank him. Thank him for his faithfulness. Glorify him. Glorify him. Glorify him. In Jesus' mighty name. This is the this is the, this is the cream, the, the cream of everything. The Bible says he was fully persuaded. Have you read your Bible in Romans? Let everyone be fully persuaded in his own mind. He was fully persuaded that he who has promised is able. Is able to bring it to pass. He was fully persuaded. And when Mary said to the angel, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, let your word come to pass as you have spoken it. Be it unto me according to your word. The next sentence she had from the Holy Spirit is in Luke chapter 1 verse number 45. 
The moment you are fully persuaded, this is what is going to happen. Blessed is she who believes, for there will be a fulfillment, a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. The moment you believe, the moment you judge God faithful, the moment you are fully persuaded in your heart, blessed are you who believe, for there will be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Every word of the Lord we have received in this hour, in this season, is not by election, it's by selection. We position ourselves ready and all that God wants to do, He will do. Father, we judge you faithful. Yes, the room is electrified already. I can sense that your faith is rising. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this hour. We judge you faithful. We are not backsliders. We are going to fulfill destiny. We bless your holy name. And we rejoice in your presence. That everything you have said concerning this nation will come to pass. Verdict 2023. Nigeria wins. Verdict 2023. I can hear you. Verdict 23. Nigeria wins. Give the Lord praise in the name of Jesus. Let's fine tune our faith and our hope in God as we prayerfully sing in one selected specially for this service. In one, my hope is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name.
lift up your voices today and bless the name of the Lord. Thank Him for His faithfulness. Thank Him for peace in your heart, peace in your family, peace in our land, in our nation. Thank Him for the gift of life that He has granted you and I. Bless His holy name. Only the living can praise the Lord. We thank you, our Father and our God. <laughs> All of the ground is sinking, sir. We do not care about what men can do or what they have done. We rely only on what you have done and what you are doing. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. In a different stage, even as we go again this weekend into election. Let everything be done according to your plan and purpose. And your name and your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name and the people said. Amen. Tell your neighbor, are you getting your faith boosters? Make sure from now on you think right. You talk right. So that you can live right. In Jesus' mighty name. Be like your pastor because he is like Jesus. In the midst of storm, he's smiling, he's dancing, he's rejoicing, he's jumping because he has seen the end in the name of Jesus.